In this so easy video, I'm going to show you how to make prairie points. And I got quite a giggle because when I was setting up to shoot the video, I thought, well, what quilt do I have that has prairie points and where is it? And then all of a sudden I realized, aha, uh -huh, I have one right here in my sewing studio. Uh, on my, I have a design wall behind it, but in front of it I put a curtain rod up top or a, you know, a real good heavy duty one so I can hang a quilt over my design wall anytime so I can dress it up or whatever. I have all sorts of options. And on it just happens to be this quilt that I made, gosh, 15 years ago at least for an applique book I did with a company that's no longer in, in existence. And it just happens to have prairie points on it. Prairie points you think of as something kind of old-fashioned, but as you can see, this is not exactly an old-fashioned quilt, even though it's using the double wedding ring and prairie points. Uh, prairie points just add something to quilts, and I'm going to show you how to put them on the outside edges of your quilts, but you can also stick them inside so that they point inside. So they're really versatile, and you can use different sizes. You can overlap them in different ways. You can even use them like on a round pillow. So I'm going to show you how to make them. This is a folding technique, so it's really easy. I've cut my squares four and a half inches. Now you might want to make them a different size depending on the size of your quilt. For a regular quilt, usually four and a half is about right. And I'm going to fold them in half and press and fold them in half again. And as you can see now we've made a handy dandy little triangle. And you have the folded side, but then you also have this open side. And that's what's going to come in handy for putting them onto our quilt. So I will do all of my pressing and then I'll get ready to pin them onto my quilt. Now I've started by just pinning one in place because I want you to see how nicely this goes. You're just putting these on the corner so that they meet like that. Couldn't be simpler. And then so pin your first one in place and I'm using the short edge so we can do this quickly and I can show you placement. Now remember how I mentioned that you have a folded edge and an open edge? Well you want to have all of your folded edges go in the same direction and you'll see why now because this open I'm going to stick the next one in there and overlap them just a little and that's why you want to have the open edges all the way so that you can all in the same direction so you can work your way all the way around the little the quilt. Then you pin this one in and now when you get to the other corner and, and we can put this one in place so that we have a frame of reference here. When you get here, you want to kind of even things out. Now on a big quilt, you have a lot of fudge room because you have a lot of these that you can move around um, to, make your, to make everything work out. Now, this one just happens to work out that this overlap is about the same as that overlap. But often, you'll have a line of them and this one might have only this much overlap. So you want to unpin this one and make them work. And fortunately, because there isn't much fudge room on this short edge, this worked out so well. Now, and also often you don't have all the same color. I just thought it would look good on this. This is going to end up being a table runner. I thought it would be nice having just one color and also this goes with the binding, the, um, it, it's actually an inner folded and inserted border in the quilt that's on the bed that this is going to be in the bedroom with. So now once I have all of these in place, I will go ahead and stitch these down with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm sewing my prairie points down. That one behaved, but sometimes you come sew along and you come to the point, the point of the prairie point and it wants to get whoop like that. It wants to do like that. So that's why I have my machine in the needle down position so that when, I, when that happens, I can just lift the presser foot, the needle's down to hold everything in position. I can get that, that point to behave itself and get where it needs to be and then I can just sew along. So you will use a quarter inch sew, uh, seam allowance and go all the way around your quilt. Now, with all of your prairie points stitched on, you're ready to layer and quilt your quilt. But do remember that you're gonna be turning this to the side here, turning the prairie points out. So don't quilt right to the edge. Leave some room there so that you'll have some room to turn it. And then once your quilting is done, when you trim your batting, instead of trimming it right up to the edge as you would, trim it about a quarter of an inch in because then that'll give you some room for those seam allowances because those are thicker seam allowances. And when you go to, um, instead of stitching a binding down, your hand stitching will be the backing that you'll turn inside and you'll be stitching along the edge. Now on a small piece like this, I might use the envelope method where I will, would stitch my um, batting and backing now and turn through an, an opening. 
Now for both my quilt behind me and this table runner, it's really the prairie points that make the quilt. For this one, it finishes it, it holds it together, it makes it complete, and of course it reiterates the color changes throughout. And for the table runner, it's just so simple, and without the prairie points it wouldn't be anything. A table runner, you really are going to put something on it, so you want that to be featured, but you want a frame around whatever is going to be on the table, and the prairie point edges make the frame. So now you know how to make prairie points. For more tips and lessons like this, visit QNNTV.com.